Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Gavin Fish. Today, we are continuing our look at the victims and possible victims of the Zodiac Killer as we commemorate the solving of the 340 Cipher. December 1st, 1969. 17-year-old Walnut Creek, California resident and Pleasant Hill High School senior, Elaine Louise Davis, had spent the evening shopping with her mom, Gretchen. They arrived home at about 10 p.m. At 10.30 p.m., Elaine's mom needed to go pick up her husband, James, from work at a service station in nearby Concord. She left Elaine with her daughter, a three-year-old who was asleep in her bed. When her mom and dad returned home at about 11.15 p.m., Elaine was gone. Left behind were her glasses and her purse with $4 in cash inside. Her three-year-old sister was still in her bed, asleep. News of Elaine's disappearance didn't surface for three days. Police said they wanted to rule out any possibility that she had simply run away. Her parents never considered that a possibility. They described her as responsible and level-headed. She was an honor student earning straight A's and didn't use drugs. She was shy and didn't have a steady boyfriend. She was a member of an a cappella choir and president of the Horizon Club, a Campfire Girls group. They told reporters she was anxiously awaiting word from the University of California at Davis to find out if her application for admission had been accepted. A few days later, the acceptance letter arrived. Mrs. Davis said Elaine was loading the dishwasher when she left and was planning on sewing a button onto her coat. When she and her husband arrived back at the house that night, the lights were on throughout the house, except in the front bedroom where their three-year-old was sleeping. When she left to pick up Mr. Davis, she closed the front door, but didn't lock it. Her theory was that Elaine was taken by force by an unknown abductor. Police agreed. They said the most likely scenario was that she was taken by force or fear from the house against her will. They used bloodhounds to turn up the trail that her abductor may have taken on the street or through nearby fields, but handlers could only say she left through the front door. Searchers found a brass button from her coat in a vacant lot next door. It was unknown if it was the button that Elaine was planning to replace that night, or if it was a clue in her disappearance. Elaine Davis had sandy blonde hair and blue eyes. She stood just four foot 11 and a half inches tall and weighed only 100 pounds. She would be easy to take by force for a man with just moderate strength. When she was last seen, she was wearing brown corduroy Levi's, a navy blue coat with gold buttons, brown loafers with gold buckles, a pearl ring with a gold band, and a gold necklace with a small heart. Four days after her disappearance, Elaine's little sister, the three-year-old who was asleep in her bed, dropped a bombshell when she said, quote, they took her away, she didn't want to go, close quote. From that statement from a frightened little girl, it sounds like there was more than one suspect. Police questioned neighbors and followed up on leads. None of them panned out. 
Then a Forest Service surveyor named Richard Constant Jr. told police he was hitchhiking around 10.30 p.m. on the night Elaine went missing and was picked up by a youth in a green sedan. Inside was a young blonde girl weeping. He asked her what was wrong and got no response. They took him to a gas station, dropped him off, then sped off. Before he got out, they told him they were going to Reno, Nevada. The following morning at about 10 o'clock a.m., a housewife in Danville, which is about five miles to the south of Walnut Creek where Elaine was abducted, found one of Elaine's shoes, a brown loafer with a gold buckle, on a freeway on-ramp. Police scoured the area for more clues, turning up nothing more. Lab tests were done to match soil on the shoe to samples from throughout the area to see if they could get an idea of where she had been. Police noted no scuff marks on the shoe and theorized that Elaine may have thrown the shoe from the car as a way of leaving breadcrumbs. Two weeks later, a navy coat with brass buttons was located in the Santa Cruz Mountains. A needle and thread were stuck in the coat. There was no doubt the coat was Elaine's. That was the final clue anyone ever found in the search for Elaine Davis. In a last-ditch effort, a reward was offered for information leading to her whereabouts. Nothing was turned up. The kidnapping of Elaine Davis is occasionally included in lists of cases that could have been perpetrated by the Zodiac Killer. I don't see a connection, but that doesn't mean there isn't one. As I search the papers, Elaine's name comes up from time to time when a body is found and police wonder if it might be hers. Too many young women went missing in Northern California during the 1960s and 70s only to have their bodies wash ashore later, or worse, to never be found again. Elaine Louise Davis is among the latter. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.